Right, OK, great stuff. Let's get into it now, shall we? Paper talk on the way. We're going to be taking a look at some of the stories that are dominating the back pages this morning. And to do that, delighted to say we're joined by The Guardian's uh, Jamie Jackson and broadcaster, podcaster Sam Tai joins us as well. Gentlemen, great to see you both. Thank you so much uh, for coming on bright and early this morning uh, to join us for this. And we're going to start, uh, well, there's a lot of transfers flown around this morning. The Telegraph here, it says, Fernandez caps £800 million frenzy on the back of the Daily Telegraph and it's about this Enzo Fernandez deal pushing the British clubs past the 800 million pound mark. Uh, Jamie I'll start with you I mean sum up what was a quite fascinating window in your opinion. Yeah I mean I've covered many of these in my time as a, a football uh, writer reporter and this is one of the most vibrant certainly January windows I can ever remember it's actually very difficult in your head anyway, to keep track of all the different deals. I mean, even at the club I sort of support, Forrest, <laughs> in and of itself. And this Fernandez thing, I mean, I tweeted yesterday, it's a bit of a joke, obviously. Why, why don't Chelsea just buy Benfica? Because overall, it might be more value for money because it's such an astronomical fee. Um, but, you know, you've got, you've got to love it. I mean, from our point of view, and if you're, you know, you're a fan of football, there's so many, it is great to see, yeah, sort of how, as I say, the word vibrant again. Um, he must be some player. Obviously, he helped Argentina win the World Cup. Um, they've really gone for it. That You know, the new owner, um, you know, ownership. Um, I've, I think, I don't know, I think it's about half a billion they have spent alone since they came in. And, you know, the thing we've got to remember is all these players come in and then we get to see how, it, you know, the different narratives unfold at a particular club. So it's been fascinating, really enjoyable to report on and just to observe it is an entertainment business obviously football and the transfer window has not disappointed um, in this particular month yeah you're absolutely right it is going to be fascinating to see how these players develop over their long contracts that they have and, and Sam it is uh, a British record Fernandez. what are your thoughts on on this new transfer for Chelsea well uh, I admire the determination from both sides to stick to their guns here and I want to thank them for creating an incredible storyline that leaked well into the latter stages of the deadline day. I think it was only confirmed at sort of 9.45 or, or 10 p.m. I mean, I sat here waiting and waiting and waiting and wondering what these executives were doing with their spare hours. So thanks for that. That was great entertainment. But I mean, ultimately, 120 million or so euros on Enzo Fernandez about six months after arriving in Europe uh, and joining Benfica. Oh, it's too much money, obviously, um, but Chelsea wanted to get this done. Clearly, they're a bit worried that if they don't finish in the Champions League. Players like Enzo Fernandez may be off the table for them come summer. So they've been very, very aggressive over the course of the winter and gone out and secured some of the best young talent. It's going to be very exciting. Enzo, for those of you that don't know or didn't see him at the World Cup, is is amazing. He is amazing. Like it's it's, it's obviously too much money for a for a, a very young footballer. But what a player! He's like two players rolled into one. You know that ball security, deep press resistance, but also that creative instinct in the final third as well. So if you're going to spend your money and you're going to spend big, you might as well do it on very good players. And I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty confident Chelsea have picked up a, a superstar here. Yeah, a lot of young players coming into Chelsea. Big futures ahead of them and Chelsea will be desperately hoping that they all uh, live up to their reputations in the coming long years that they're going to have at Stamford Bridge. Um, we often say January's a difficult window to get any business done. It wasn't the case for some clubs, but it was for others. And here in the mirror, it says Everton Fury over deadline day snubs. And it's all after new manager Sean Dyche came in, it, was, it took a long time, didn't it? It was announced eventually on Monday, but not enough time to get any new signings. Jamie, we're getting a lot of Everton fans getting in touch with us this morning, really unhappy about the way that deadline day worked out for them. And they were arguably the club that needed to do the most. What did you make of their window? Well, they, have they not lost the, the, the best player in Anthony Gordon? Certainly, potentially. Um... <laughs> A disaster, really. The best I can say is they're only two points off the safe zone. But the worst I can say is I don't see much hope, apart from Sean Dyche, who I think they've, they've done well there. So you could say they have had, you know, they've got the best manager in for the sort of position they're in. But I have a lot of friends who are Everton fans. You know, I know people who have worked there. And I have to say, it's how can I say, it's a challenging club to go into because of how it's run, you know, sort of structurally. 
Um, yeah, I feel for Everton fans. It's a great club, you know, brilliant club. I, I sometimes report on games there. I love going there. Great ground, but you know, how can you not add in, in this in this window? Um, you know, in the situation they're in. So you have to say, you know, pretty badly managed. You know, this window, to be honest. Yeah, and so as Jamie's saying that, I mean, Anthony Gordon gone for £40 million, which, you, you know, you read the reports, that was about £40 million paid in, a, in, in a big lump sum as well, was sitting there, and plus £5 million in add-ons, it wasn't reinvested. Uh, how worried would you be if you were an Everton fan this morning? Well, my advice to Everton fans would be to count Sean Dyche as a January signing, because that at least puts you <laughs> up to one. I think, I think that's the only way you can really handle this, because it's so disappointing to see the club in such a predicament in the league table, to see some of the performances recently. And like, you only have to go back a couple of weeks and they lost at home to Southampton, who were the only team in the division really that have been worse than them over the course of the last five months or so. So this is pretty worrying. And to get nothing done is, is really tough. And I remember reading Sean Dyche's quotes when he was unveiled as manager and he talked about the fact that he'd sat down with the board and with the, with the scouts and, and, and the director of footballs. And they, and he, they sort of, looked at some lists and Sean Dyche had said, yeah, I'm quite excited. You know, might be able to get this player, might be, might be able to get this player. He clearly been told that like, you know, there's, opp there's an opportunity to invest in a couple of players here to help you out. And they ended up with basically nothing. It puts him in a position where if he succeeds and Everton stay up, he's a genius. If they don't and they go down, it's not really his fault. So from his personal perspective, he'll be irritated that he's not been held, but his, you know, his situation is quite secure. The problem for Everton is like, it's a badly set up team. Dyche has got a lot of work to do here, a lot of work and very quickly. And he's just lost one of his attacking sparks with Dominic Calvert-Lewin's injury record. It is genuinely really concerning for them. I just don't really know where they expect the goals to come from. And that's ultimately the currency that will or will not keep you up when you're down there. Yeah, big, big pressure on Sean Dyche now to uh, to try and turn things around at Goodison Park. And, uh, you know, like you say, Sam, um, Dyche potentially, Everton fans seemingly very happy with that appointment, largely, but uh, disappointed that he hasn't been given the tools to strengthen uh, his squad. Uh, bit of a quiz slash uh, debate now. I'm going to go through a few questions to you both. I'll, I'll flip-flop it a little bit and get your thoughts. Um, so, get ready. Here we go. First one, best signing of the window. Sam, I'll start with you. Who do you think is the best signing of the window? Oh, um, I mean, look, I think the best signing of the window was not made by a Premier League club. It was a Premier League sale. I think to get Joao Cancelo on loan is unbelievable. Like, I'd, I'd go as far as to say he's not just one of the world's best fullbacks, he's one of the world's best footballers. And that's not often something you say about someone in the fullback position. That's how good he is. So that whatever's happened has happened, you know, with him and Pep Guardiola. But for Bayern to just come up on deadline day and end up with Joao Cancelo for what is a presumably very little upfront fee and an option to buy him later if you want to. Unbelievable mm. stuff. Good shout. OK, Jamie, what do you reckon? Well, I agree with Cancelo. But I'm going to say Jorginho because I can't believe for mm. 12 million, for example, the club I report on Manchester United, who sort of need a midfielder, didn't have a look at him. I mean, it shows how much money they don't have at the moment. But this is a guy who's a European champion at club and country level. He's only 31 and crumbs 12 million, you know, to, 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 to buy the gentleman. I think I think that's an unbe unbelievable uh, value. And, you know, from Arsenal's point of view, well, uh, it makes them even more favourites because I've been seeing them a few times in the flesh now, you know, adding magnificent this player, scenes, you know, it's sort of very, very um, good signing. So I'd say Jorginho. Um, next one, guys. Who had the best January, do we think? Jamie, I'll start with you. Who had the best January? I'd, I'd say Arsenal. Because you, you, you add Trossard into that as well. Um, you know, they strengthen from a position of strength, which is what the champions always do. I know not the champions, but the champions elect or, you know, sort of pretenders, how you want to describe it. So to do that, um, I think is really, real masterstroke and shows that they're switched on there. You know, they're really going for this. So I, I think it's Arsenal unbelievable because they want to be champions and what have they done? They've strengthened, you know, I would say, fair, you know, pretty significantly. Uh, Sam? I'll go for Leicester City, um, which is a welcome surprise, really, I guess, for some Leicester fans, given that the horrible summer that they endured. But 
I think they've signed three really good players. I'm a fan of Christensen. I was watching him in the Champions League because his Copenhagen side drew, excuse me, Manchester City uh, in the Champions League. So that helps get to watch him. Good player. Obviously, a lot of injuries in that position. Tete is a winger on loan. Very good. And Suta, like, if you're struggling from set pieces, just sign the biggest bloke you can find. And he is massive. Surely he will help defend those corners and free kicks into the box. Uh, OK, uh, I'll tell you what, we're going to go to the last paper now before we run out of time. And you're not going to be surprised, guys, that I wanted to, to finish here. Uh, it is The Sun and um, it could have been any paper this morning, to be honest. At Newcastle United, Sean Longstaff, local boy, plastered across the back pages. The headline here, long time coming. And it's um, all about Newcastle, of course, getting to Wembley. It says we're on our way to Wembley. Uh, that was what the mirror went with as well after Newcastle's first final in 24 years. 2-1 win against Southampton, 3-1 on aggregate. They're through the EFL Cup final. First of my lifetime as well. Um, guys, what do we think? Jamie, I mean, it was an incredible atmosphere at St. James's Park last night. The fans have waited a long, long time. And, I mean, I guess the general one is just how good a job has Eddie Howe done since coming into the club? Well, a ridiculously good job because I know they have signed players and spent money. But there's been no sort of like superstar sort of, um, you know, sort of signings. Um, I'm at the Manchester United game tonight. Obviously, they're 3-0 up against Nottingham Forest. So it looks like they're going to be playing Manchester United in the final, which is actually their last ever final uh, contest was against United. I believe in the 99 FA Cup final. Um, and it's nice that Sean Longstaff, uh, with his two goals, the local lads, you know, sort of scored... Um, Last night, but Eddie Howe has surprised me. I've got to say, he has shown for me anyway that he is a top manager because he's gone in there with all the expectations. He's done it in a very calm, quiet, but very assured uh, manner. And you know, it, I was surprised actually that they asked him to be the manager, but that shows what I know because actually he is really, yeah, he's really done it the right way. They play very good football, very good defensively, and you know, um, let's see what happens in the final. OK, we're just about being beaten by the clock, so I will say thank you. Just, Sam, very quickly, one word from you. Will, can Newcastle win it in the final, yes or no? Yes, Pete. That was <laughs> You're always going to say that, Sam. <laughs> thank you for that. Uh, Jamie, Sam, fantastic to see you both. Thanks so much for coming on Paper Talk this morning. We really do appreciate your time.